school. Hi, everybody out there in the land of strong communities. We are super excited to bring you another unique genius in 33 today. I am Joe Self coming to you live from Lima, Peru. And I am super excited today because we are going to talk command. And I love talking command, especially with women, because I got to say, it's one of those talents that people tend to associate some masculine energy to. So for me, it's always fascinating when we can talk to a woman with command. And now we're on our second female with this talent. And so I'm super excited to present Bianca to you guys today. So I'm going to let Bianca, Bianca, por favor, please tell us your strengths, but also a little bit about who you are, where you are, and what you do. Thank you so much, uh, Joe. Um, tantas gracias. Uh, <laughs> so I am in Charlotte, North Carolina. Obviously, I'm Bianca Capo, and I'm a strengths-based leadership coach. I help mission-driven leaders bring their teams and their organizations together to create coherent, resilient, and inclusive teams and organizations. And I love what I do because I coach two leaders, and I believe everyone's a leader. Uh, and, and so I was born in Puerto Rico, grew up in New York City, and landed in the Carolinas uh, many, many, many decades ago. <laughs> and so here I am, and I'm super excited to join you. I love talking about command. It's so misunderstood, right? Yeah. Yeah, and so okay. I'm, I'm open. I'm an open book. You tell me what you want to know. Ah, fantastic. Well, first, we're going to start for those of the for those of our audience who are out there are not totally familiar with command. The Gallup definition of command is that people exceptionally talented in the command theme have presence. They can take control of a situation and make decisions. So, with that in mind, Bianca, what do you love about command? Mm, I love that it allows me to um, become clear. Um, I think one of the things that it, it, it provides or contributes to others is a process to bring clarity. And that clarity allows me to be very decisive uh, and or move towards a decision. Um, and so becoming uh, stuck or, ha or coaching someone that is stuck around something um, is, is, is my, my energy or my permission to dive in and say, okay, let's think this through, let's dice it up and let's bring clarity to the situation because um, decision or no, dis no decision, it's, it's going to be a decision, right? Right. right. So um, yeah, I'm excited to bring together the clarity around that. Yeah. And I, I think that's one of the things that's really special about command, right? Is, is that ability to get clarity and kind of get there quickly when everything seems a little bit cloudy for other people, right? Mm -hmm. um, so flip that coin around. When can command get in your way or how can it get in your way? Mm -hmm. So I, 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 when I'm triggered, right? If I, and we all get triggered for different variety of reasons. We're humans. <laughs> right, happens. exactly. And so this is one of the things that I do in my training and in my coaching is we identify triggers because those are the moments that we need to be super, super aware and notice that we might be prone to reacting versus responding. And so uh, command when triggered has the propensity to just go ahead and make a decision and say, this is what we're going to do and you all are taking too long <laughs> and um just it, there is a there's an urgency to move something along towards you know the the end goal or towards um the activities required to, sure. to make something happen and so ultimately um that's when it can get in my way if, if there's a lot of indecision yeah yeah, that can be super frustrating. Yes. <laughs> I totally relate to that. You have, and then when you combine it with activator, which you also have, and you also have command in your top 10, yes, I, I it's do. like, oh, you know, we got to get this moving along. And, and that's it. And, yeah. and, and, and if we flip it again, that could be a, a huge strength, right? Because we're right. the ones that get people, individuals, or groups unstuck. Right. And it becomes that way of how, like how you manage that, right? There's the demanding, frustrated, oh my God, guys, let's do it. Or there's the, okay, I'm recognizing that this is a problem. Mm -hmm. Let's figure out our way through it, right? But we've got to make a decision of some sort. Yeah, mm -hmm. that stagnation can definitely be a big trigger, right? 
mm -hmm. for command. So obviously we have these talents all of our lives, right? So how did command show up for you mm. sort of throughout your life? And I love to sort of see the process from like when we're little kids up to where you are now and how you've seen it develop. Yeah, and so, so that's a good question because when you, when you get your results from the Clifton Strengths Finder and you, you start identifying how these behavior patterns have shown up for you in your life um, so that you can really claim way um, the, easily command was just one of those um, command was just one of those that um, popped up my mom my brothers my sisters were always saying why are you telling us what to do all the time <laughs> <laughs> especially me and my mom we were bump heads right and right. so she was like I'm your mother you're not the mother of me <laughs> right. and so to this day um, my brother and sister call me my mom's mom because we were gump heads and, and it was all about, you know, telling, and it's really a language thing, right? right. When, when our talents are not trained up um, and, and, and we're not aware of them, our language is very, very connected to what they need and what they want to accomplish. Right. And because I was decisive, I saw something, I saw what needed to be done. I would say, this is, I, I wouldn't hardly even say please. I was like, do this, do this, do this, do this, right? As right. a young teenager. And now, of course, you know, totally different because I'm on <laughs> totally. But if you, if you ask me, that's, you know, that's it. That's it right there. Well, and I, and I can totally relate to that. And, and like you said, you know, my command isn't in my top five, but I always joke, like, don't tell her because she doesn't know she's not in my top five. Like, she definitely has replaced is definitely a dominant talent. But what's funny about it, um, when I look back, I can remember in high school, my dad traveled a lot. So I took care of myself. I didn't have a nanny. You know, by the time I was 16, I was basically taking care of the house of myself, going to school, doing everything. So when my dad would come home from his trips, I would, I would say, okay, well, hey, dad, I'm going here tonight. I'm going to do this and I'll be home by this time and da, 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 da. And he'll go, would you maybe like to ask that as a question? And I would go, <laughs> <laughs> do I need to? And it, I, and it wasn't that I was telling him, it's that command expects you to challenge back. So if it's not right. okay, command mm -hmm. just expects the other person to challenge back. So I forget to ask questions. And that's been something I've been doing for a long time. And it's not that I'm not open to a response. I right. just don't make it an obvious, easy entry way all the time. Yes. And so I, I'm cracking up because that is so true. I, I can totally relate to that. Um, my mom kept telling me when you're not 18 yet, you you can't do what you want. And the day I turned 18, I reminded her, I'm doing whatever I want going forward. <laughs> 18 now. <laughs> I was like, she has to have that in her, um, like, this is the worst thing I could have told her. Right. <laughs> It's so funny. Um, no, we're, we're just so independent, right? We, we, we're leaders. We right. are really leading our lives in a way that, um, that, re that is connected to a cause. So if we bring it back forward to today, um, my command is so helpful. It is, it pushes back against resistance and the right. challenges that we, that we, all have right right it is the one that i attribute to for me having the resilience that i have and the reason why i facilitate resiliency in others is because oh. that ability to to shift perspective to shift lanes if we need to to be adaptable but right. to move forward in at the face of all challenges is what command is about I really like that. You know, I honestly, I don't think I've given command enough credit for that part of it. And so I really, that's a nice aha for me. I love that you can do this for years and years and still have those. Oh, yes, very moments, much so. Right? Because, uh, you know, through my life, I've always been told you're so strong and you can do this and I have adaptability. And so there's always been a piece of adaptability. It's a little bit lower down, but like there's always been a piece of adaptability that I kind of attributed that to. But you're absolutely right. I can see where command is that resiliency. It's just a need to keep moving forward, take charge, and do what needs to be done, right? It does give you a, a certain strength, that, that resiliency. 
Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, thank you for and that. So, if I may, because you brought you bring up a good point, uh, the combination of strengths is is what we all need to at the next level of understanding our strengths and others is where we need to focus because my command in a ranger command number five or ranger number six create a flexibility about me that says okay we don't have to do it my way absolutely not on, on the contrary I, I also have strategic and i want right. to look at all the options what we do is move the momentum and the deliverables along so that we can get to the end goal and my flexibility and your adaptability our strategic right. create a, mat a a manifestation of a talent in a different way right right so I always say in my trainings, just because you see X talent coming down the hallway, don't presume you know them. Right. Their right. combination is going to create that unique person that is, you know, contributes their strengths in a unique way. Right. Because they really can show up so differently. So that was great. I love that you started talking about how your talents are playing together. So do you notice any other talents, like how your command plays with your other talents? How do they, how do they help each other? So yeah, command and arranger are my, are my favorite. So activator, command and arranger. If you think about that, they bring urgency and momentum and efficiency and moving things along. But let me speak one second about command and significance together because I have both of those in my top mm. five and they show up in the top five less than what, 5% of the time, each of yeah. them. Yeah. And I have both of them together. And, and what happens is that my command and significance show up to drive uh, forward the potential of the project or the individuals mostly so that they, I can equip them to achieve their potential. So my personal mission statement or strength contribution statement is, um, is to equip others to self-actualize so that they can collaboratively mm. achieve. And so I have my how, my what, and my why embedded in my contribution statement. I love because that. Because I worked on it, and of course I help my clients do the same, but it's, it's because all of these different needs that we have that, via our different talent and behavior patterns, they have a need. And so your personal contribution statement in the end needs to incorporate all their needs. And when significance who wants to leave a legacy and do important work, uh, coach mission driven leaders, when they get together with command, it's about bringing powerful, powerful momentum to the mission at hand through helping others um, achieve their potential. I love it. Interesting. Oh, I totally just had an idea. You just activated my ideation. Yes. Bring it, bring <laughs> it. I have to write it down so I don't forget it well, before we get off the call. Um, so I love that. And so command and significance. So, I, so it sounds like your significance leads really towards, you know, very purpose-driven. Mm, yes, yes. Right, very purpose-driven. And that command really makes sure that it's not just about you, that it's really is the leading others as you do that. Absolutely. And I have, I have a, a question that you can pose to your people that is very much um, um, represents who I am. So mm -hmm. I heard it recently. So if you had one more day to live, what would you do? Nice. What would That's you do? If you had one more day to do, live, what would you do? And, and you may not want to answer, but my answer is, you want to answer it? Go ahead and answer. I think I know my, I, I know my gut answer. I mean, and for me, it would be to spend some time with my son. Yes. Yes. Uh, and I totally get that. Um, mine would be to plant a tree. Oh. And, the reason, and, and I heard this quote, it's an, an anonymous quote. I will forever own it because it's literally what my strengths combined, especially command and significance. Right. Right. And the tree is representative of uh, of mission driven work that leaves a legacy behind so that absolutely if you're gone people are still benefiting from your work yeah i can see that see and i think you know if i expanded that i really do think it would be it would be spending time with my son that would be mm -hmm. paramount for me sure but i think it would also be writing thank you messages mm. to people which i definitely think would be my positivity and connectedness yeah it would be my my need to say thank you. 
Yes. Oh, that that's awesome. Yeah, it it would be gratitude. So, um, so when do your talents maybe show up a little bit of conflict with each other? And I know we talked a little bit about that trigger of activator and command, mm -hmm. right? That I don't know that is a bad thing, but that's a pair that can get triggered mm -hmm. easily, you know, together, right? Yeah. And so I think that in general, where they may have conflict is the fact that I have ideation as well. I'm very, very creative and innovative. Um, and the ideas, I'm now focused on, you know, the one, you know, platform. Um, but sometimes ideas um, come in different forms, flavors, and maybe you want to go in that direction or this direction. Like, I would love to own uh, uh, some kind of, of wellness facility or center, right? Well, that's right. not in my, in my, in my focus right now. So I have to keep a bay all the other <laughs> ideas that I have yeah. so that, um, you know, I could, you know, visit them later when I have, you know, um, I, I used to be a financial planner and I really believe in um, just uh, having multiple streams of income, right? But right. You, know, you have to focus on one or two first. <laughs> so that's, right. that's what I would say. Well, that's kind of fascinating. So how did you go from financial planner to coach? What made you decide yeah. to make that change? That's such a great question. Thank you for asking. Uh, so I spent 20 years working very hard, diligently studying to um, uh, advise others and consult through financial planning strategies. Uh, and so ultimately, that's what a planner does is the strategies, the, 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 the ways to align your, your portfolio. And right. so, um, and also to protect your assets, obviously. And so um, I just had a yearning that I wanted, I mean, entrepreneurship and the, the ability to, to just design your life around your strengths and what you yearn to do more often and to create a platform that you could do that more often in is was what was drive, you know, drive my, my, my run as um, a business owner. And, and I'm blessed for it. In the last five and a half years, I have done so much training. I've gone back to school. That's a story for another, another day. <laughs> um, and so my drive to create a platform that really engages others, that brings human connectivity together, that gives them and equips them the, the tools they need to self-actualize and achieve potential is, is what's you know, became my focus. And so I needed to reinvent myself and retrain to do that. And I've done that. So I'm excited to say that. Well, and now I want to hear a little bit of this because people ask all the time, what's the best job I could have? What is the best job for my talents? And we always have to say, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. That's so right. how have you taken those same talents? Like, how did they serve you as a financial planner? I mean, I think it feels obvious in this leadership direction and what you're doing now, yes. but how did they serve you as a financial planner? How did they show up then? And so it's so interesting because I say I, I didn't leave that work because I didn't like it. Um, I left it because I wanted to expand on how I delivered my, my strengths and contribute right. to planting the tree, so to speak. Right. Sure. And so as a financial advisor and, and, advi and consultant, um, I basically sat with individuals one-on-one -on -one and helped them make the most important decisions. Right. Come in, right. It's right. like, let's gather the information, dice it up, strategize, do a little this, a little that, and then let's go ahead and make a decision and move forward. And so that's right. what I did for 20 years. I'm still doing that. And so doing that from a consultant coach uh, and, and facilitator, uh, when I meet with leaders, I help them get clarity around who they are, what their strengths are, how to lead based on their strengths, but more as important, if not more important, is how do you lead based on other people's strengths so that you can get the best out of them so that you can help them develop their strengths so right. that we collaboratively achieve. And so it's, it's very rewarding work. Yeah, I would imagine. And I mean, you know, and I was just listening to you and especially how you approach the business, you can hear your command, you can hear your other talent. So I thought that was a, having had someone on here has had that very distinct change, right? Because people ask this all the time, you know, what next? And it's like, well, yeah. what do you need from your talent space? And how do you serve that in a different way? Right? And yes, and thank you for that. Because now that, re that re reminds me, command and even activator, they're very gut-based. 
right? Yeah. Yeah. They're courageous. They're like from, and I start, and I study the neurobiology of the head, heart, and gut. Oh, I and love I'm that. Understanding yeah. how your head does one thing, your heart another, and your gut another, and integrating that uh, is my thesis at school is becoming a whole self leader. And how do you integrate your intelligences so that you understand what your heart is telling you versus your gut and command is very gut based. Um, uh, I sense this, I'm courageous enough. I sense the, the, the challenges and, you know, we're going to push through. And so that's an important combination or distinction to make from other talents, maybe heart based and, or, or head based. Right. Ooh, God, I love exploring strengths from that perspective because I'm a huge fan of the three brains. I'm a huge fan of the three brains. I don't do a lot of it myself, but I know other people who practice and I love yeah. going to them when I'm trying to make tough decisions or having yeah. to do that. I love going through the process of, well, of exploring each of those areas. So I'm fascinated. Well, I love to know that you do that. <laughs> you. So, um, hit me up anytime because I'm, uh, I'm actually certified in the integration of those three um, awesome. as a multiple brain integration coach. And I, I help my leaders do that all the time. Huh, fantastic. So going from there, so how do you see that? So we've looked at the different ways for, you know, with the roles that you've had from a professional standpoint, but do you see your command showing up differently in your personal life versus mm -hmm. how it shows up in your professional life? I mean, do you wear a slightly different hat? I mean, the essence is going to be the same, but do you wear a slightly different hat? And I say that because my strategic, I've thought about a lot because it's my number one. So like I'm a map maker in life and with my business and outside, I'm helping people write their maps and figure out their paths. With my son, I'm an explorer. I'm not about writing his path, but I'm about discovering which one is the right one with him. Yeah. And throwing I those options that. out in a different way. So that's how my strategic shows up differently. Yeah. I love that you do that. Um, and, and when we are able to develop our strengths and become really super aware, we're able to really um, use them differently in different roles, right? right. Um, at home, I, my partner has um, totally different strengths than I do. <laughs> as um, often as the case. Let's just put it this way. He has my bottom 10. <laughs> um, empathy is really high with him and it's really low with me actually. Uh, and so I'm having to um, facilitate decisions in a different way with my partner uh, because ultimately I still need them, right? I still right. need to be momentum driven and results driven. Um, not that he's not, but at the same time, it takes a different kind of um, showing up. The emotional intelligence piece that we gather from knowing our strengths and training them up is huge, right? right. So yeah, um, at home, I'm a little softer and, um, you know, he, he made, oh, he's, he's great because he has communication just like you. And so he brings so much levity and he understands me. And so, right. yeah, we, we make it work. Right. Well, and that's a perfect example because we do see that in, you know, in couples often some of the strongest couples are the couples who really are opposites when it comes to strengths, but they're willing to see that as a compliment instead of a detriment. And I think that's one of the big keys is when you can see the compliment. Mm -hmm instead of like, oh, you're so different than me, right? And expecting everything to be the same. And it takes work. I mean, it takes work, but talents work best in relationship and even better when you can find a yeah. compliment and work with that compliment and, that, and take advantage of it. So important you said that. Talents work best. And according, this is Dr. Clifton, right. and are only develop, developed in relationship to others. Yeah. Right? And that's part of the practice of growing your talents to strengths is developing it in relationships to others, because ultimately that emotional intelligence, self-awareness of yours and what is right with others is right. what's going to allow um, the relationship and connectivity to, to work. Right. Right. So for those of our audience out there who don't have command, who might not get command, what would you want them to know about command to help them avoid any potential misunderstandings or miscommunications? Great question. Um, I, I would love for everyone to know that command is, can be compassionate, first of all, right? Um, right. They, bring, they also bring emotional clarity to situations. Um, but that does not mean that they're not compassionate. I also want them to know that command, um, yeah, just, you may think that they're always 
um, challenging you, but what they need is also a, a challenge back. And, and, right. and I say that, but the underlining um, emotion there needs to be respect, right? Right, Respectful right. Respectful communication that challenges belief patterns, thoughts, um, ways of doing things, not, you know, get personal and disrespectful. And so that's, I think that's super huge because uh, I know command needs respect. Um, and let's see what else. Um, so respect, challenges, they're verbal processors. So yes. a lot of times when you're hearing this challenging, what you may think is a debate or, you know, uh, an arguing of a point is all it is, is verbal processing. Their right. thought, um, instead of thinking it in their head, they want to think it out with you. I had a, a leader that, you know, just was elated that I had helped his team understand that about him is right. that he just needs to verbally process things out. And then lastly, they need to be connected and they are always connected to some kind of cause. Uh, and that cause brings a lot of energy and passion. Yeah. To their, you know, their way of showing up in the world. And if that energy and passion may be, um, depending on who's seeing that, maybe too much for them. It can be overwhelming, right? Yeah. And so it can be maybe you just, for people. <laughs> yeah, maybe you just focus on the fact that they're just passionate about something instead of, oh my God. <laughs> that's right. Because it's not always trying to convince somebody else that that's the right thing to do or the only way to do something. It's just, that's what you found for yourself and you can't help but share that passion. Yes. And I always think of it as like, I want to hear other people's passions. I want to know what they're passionate about, yes. but it doesn't mean I'm right. And that's the other thing is, is try, for me anyway, is to make sure that people don't, just because I say it with such conviction doesn't mean I only think that's yes. the only possible answer or right answer. Mm, yes. That, and I love that you said that again. It brought up something for me that's a life lesson. So ready for this one? Yeah. I have blocked people from mentoring me and or helping me co-create in the past when I was unaware. And I discovered that in my journey as I learned this, you know, strength psychology and coaching, that it's more advantageous to help others bring up what they believe or want or need than me tell them. Right. And it's super important that we know as command people that our decisiveness, our way of being that seems so confident um, sometimes blocks other people from giving you their blessings, their contributions. And yes. we need to sit back and receive that in a very, um, you know, grateful kind of way. Well put, very well put. I absolutely agree with that. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is fantastic. All right, so the final fun question. So who do you think of as a famous person or a fictional character that kind of embodies command the way you understand it? <laughs> so, so the first thought that came to me was uh, a not so liked ca ca character, which um, Jack Nicholson in that um, A Few Good Men at the oh, end. Yeah. When he says, you can't handle the truth, right? <laughs> so, yeah, so maybe a good raw side of command. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and so, and the reason that comes up is because truth and, yeah. and the perception of that truth is a guiding light for command, right? They want to get at the bottom line of what is true and let's deal with it and move forward. Yeah. But the, the greatest, the best character would be Aaron, Aaron Brockovich. Yeah, Aaron Brockovich. And, oh, that movie's great. She's, um, she's great in that movie. She's connected to a cause. She's, she takes the lead. She says, no one else is, is doing this work. Someone needs to uh, make a difference and help these people. And she truly embodies that leadership that went out and made a difference. And um, yeah, there was nobody going to stop her. And talk about right. resilience, right? Tell, right. I mean, yeah. So Aaron, right. I mean, she like point. had nothing. She was, you know, almost on the level of poverty. She was desperate for a job. And she came across something that just really fulfilled her purpose and gave her a purpose. And she just ran yeah. with it and wasn't going to let anybody stop her. And I mean, I kind of love it because it's not just a fictional character. It's a famous person, right? right? So you've got the movie with Julia Roberts, but it's actually somebody who was out there and really took, took the, took the reins. And Command is an influencer. What does she do? She influenced Absolutely. dozens of people to sign that petition. 
right? Absolutely. Because it was based on a purpose, on a cause that was going to save lives. So she, yeah. she's truly the embodiment of, of command. Yeah. Uh, I love it. Fantastic. Well, Bianca, it has been so fabulous. I want to ask you one last question. And I think you've said a lot of it with your leadership, but I'd love to leave a final thought for those out there who are just now discovering their strengths or are trying to convince others that they should discover theirs. What has learning your strengths done for you? Mm. What do you think others should get from it? Oh my gosh. It has totally allowed me to become my most authentic leader. And, and literally my, my authenticity, my whole self shows up to lead, shows up to coach. Um, I am in, this is a process, right? A lifelong process to, to dive in into the unconscious, um, uh, authentic self and mm -hmm. allow that person to come in and contribute to the world. And that has, has been what strengths has done for me and I am now doing for others in throughout my work. And so, yeah, it's, it's understanding who you are and who you're not is one of the most powerful things you could ever spend time, you know, invest in yourself and, and, and move forward to, to, to ultimately develop. So. Uh, thank you so much, Bianca. It has been an absolute pleasure talking to you today. Thank you so much. Lots of pearls of wisdom. You gave me an aha moment, which thank you for that. I love I want to know so what happened. It Let's talk yeah. about it. <laughs> we will. We will. We'll talk about that. And so thank you so much for doing this. And for those of you out there, Unique Genius and 33 will be back next week. Um, if all goes well, we'll be talking analytical with Chris Townsend. I'm super excited about that because I think he's kind of a, a really neat embodiment of that talent as well. I'm going to be sharing this space a lot more with Sherry Strong. So even though you see Sherry at the bottom, that's not her. It's me, Joe Self. Uh, but you'll be seeing Sherry a lot more to do these interviews as well as we go up throughout this next season. Um, and as always, in the meantime, check out our flash briefing on Alexa. Say, Alexa, play the Strong Community's flash briefing. <laughs> out on Podbean and you can subscribe and download and listen at your leisure. So thanks everybody for tuning in, for downloading and for listening. We appreciate building strong communities with people just like you. Bye-bye. <laughs>